I was going into the Winter Garden in New York on the passing show in 1917. Mm-hmm. Now, this was in February. And I meet Roscoe Arbuckle, Fatty Arbuckle at that time. He had just left Senate and signed with Joe Skank. Joe Skank producing independent pictures. He was only producing at that time one company, and that was the Norma Talmadge Company. Mm -hmm. Then he signed Arbuckle from Senate, and before he made his first picture, Arbuckle met me on Broadway Mm -hmm. and uh, says, if you ever been in a motion picture? And I says, I've never even been in the studio. <laughs> he says, well, come on down and play a bit with me. I'm starting tomorrow and see how you like it. So I went down there and pl- did a bit in a picture with him. I went back and asked the Schubers to let me out of my contract at the Winter Garden, and I stayed in pictures. Mm-hmm. Then I went into the Army. I was with the 40th Division in France for seven months in France. I was a dough boy. Oh, yeah. A 40 and 8 I was. <laughs> You then I it. came back. Then Joe Skank started me with the same company, only making my own pictures. The Navigator was my biggest grossing picture, uh-huh. The Navigator. You remember Steamboat Bill Jr.? Yes. Yeah. And there was a short in which you The played. comedy was king, they called the thing. Uh, it's got, and uh, yeah. they got a picture of mine in it called Cops. Yeah. A lot of policemen chasing me. Yeah. Oh, and you did a sketch where you're on a ladder. That's over funny. A I came up here to Frisco and shot a lot of scenes here with those police. Did you? Yeah. There was a scene in the movie that I remember. I used to see at the Nelson Theater in Fairmont, West Virginia, uh, in which you stuck your head in a cannon. You remember? Was that was that in the general? That's the general. That's the general. Yeah. I have uh, had a chance to to read about uh, some of the great comedians. For instance, there's a John Bunny. John Bunny. Well, he's your first motion picture. Fat man comic, you know. But kind when they got rolling and you started to get Chaplin's and Arbuckle's and, <laughs> and yeah. Harold Lloyd's and things like that, then it changed. I wonder if uh, when you were in Vaudeville with with your family as part of the Three Keaton, did you ever saw an act called McIntyre and Heath? Yes, yes. very often. Yeah. How about the, were Harrigan and Hart still the, they preceded? They the were. Part? But McIntyre and Heath are, uh, was blackface. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and two very funny men. Yeah. And, of course, Eddie Foy, I guess, was very big at the time that, that uh, you were in your youth. George M. Cohan. Huh? That's right. Raymond Hitchcock. You know who I consider that one of the great, greatest performers of all time? All-around comedian and, and uh, showman. Who's that? In other words, these combination song and dance man. The greatest all-around performer that I ever remember is Fred Stone. Fred Stone. Oh, yes. Yeah. The original of... Uh, the Wizard, Wizard of, of Oz. Oz. Yes, he played with... Uh, and the Red Mill. Yeah. And the Lady of the Slipper. All Stepping good. Stones. Oh, and Chin Chin. For a great many years, George M. Cohen and uh, Fred Stone owned Broadway. I have seen you take pratfalls. That I was were... raised doing those things, so I, I was a pro at an awful early age <laughs> doing roughhouse work. In fact, when I first come into pictures, I scared most of the keystoners to death. There was a sketch that you did where you're standing by a bar... And there was no rail, so you put your, you put one foot on the bar and then put the other one up. <laughs> Ray's doing roughhouse work and falls, and then well, I just learned to had to learn to do them. It's the only way I could get out of it. Is there anybody today that you you feel can do that? Can do a uh, great sight? No, because uh, there's no school for that. I guess that's right. There's there's no more burlesque in the old in the you old. You see fashion. what's what's happened to you. That's uh, your your biggest school today are nightclubs mm-hmm. and summer stock theaters or something like that. So most of your young comics are just stand up talking comedians. Red Skelton is one of my pet comics as far as that goes. Well, Red, Red could could have been with us in the silent days, and you've lost all your character comedians. Slim Somerville. Well, no, you, no, a character comedian like Weber and Fields with German. Yeah. Uh, George Friedman, huh? Italian. Yeah. All your blackface comedians. Mm-hmm. We're losing them all. Jewish comedians. Yes. We used to uh, have Ben Welch, or Joe Welch, his name was, was the greatest I ever saw. But they're out and out characters. Mm-hmm. They're not grotesque. See, the Marx Brothers, for instance. That's a grotesque. That comes under the heading of uh, burlesque or buffoonery or clowns or something like that. That's not. A, he's not a character comedian. But uh, these old timers, we had some great Irish comedians. Uh, I'll show you how far back that goes. 
when I was very young, I mean, when I say I was around five or six years old, a show by the name of McFadden's Flats, playing at the theater in Rochester, New York, and it must have been the home of one of the Hibernian uh, mother lodges or something. <laughs> yeah. But they came to that show one night and completely wrecked the theater, the scenery, the actors, oh, and everything else with the eggs, tomatoes, <laughs> and everything that the audience could carry in to throw at them because of the grotesque character, characters on the stage. When you hear people praise comedians of today, fellows like Mort Saul, imagine that you must hark back in your recollection of the days of Will Rogers, who was a great commentator in our times. Yeah. And I understand that Harrigan of Harrigan at Heart used to be very, very blunt in his conversation about politics. And oh, well, politics. sure. And a Dutch comedian by the name of Cliff Gordon. Yeah. Senator George Murphy was one. Yeah. He mm -hmm. called himself Senator. Uh huh. It was with a Dutch accent, German accent. Mm hmm. Start right off said, the problem with the country today is it's being pushed. Well, there was a movie character by the name of uh, Ned Sparks. Oh, the Ned Sparks, moment. the reason he didn't smile or laugh was because he always played an old grouch. He was just a grouch. I just simply worked with a, a and, frozen face. I, I worked on the stage that way before I ever saw a, a, a studio. Did you know Fred Allen? Yes. I, I got the feeling that Fred Allen was influenced by you quite a bit. Well, I don't think so. I think it's just his delivery. It was his way of working. Mm -hmm. What do you figure that uh, is has been the golden period of American comedy? Well, I'd have to go back about, well, about 35 years, I think. Uh, yeah, I had the biggest batch. This by about the... that time, your your picture comedians were well-established. Your Broadway musical shows had some greats. Mm -hmm. Your W.C. Fields, your Eddie Cantor's, your Frank Kenny. Uh, what's his name with the get breakaway legs? Leon Earl, Joe Cook. Of course, Ed Wynn's always been one of my pets, too. Oh, yeah. How about Bobby Clark? Oh, Bobby Clark. Yeah. Uh, Harry Langdon. Harry Langdon. Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy. I'm going to ask you what you think about comedians and public personalities in politics. Well, I can ask that last one. is uh, something that my old man dr drummed into me when I was very young. He says, an actor must stay out of politics and religion. In other words, he meant you never argue religion. Mm-hmm. If there's an argument starts, you ease out of it the best way you can. You were born a Protestant, and as far as you know, that's all there is to it. Is that what he but you don't him? argue the point. <laughs> and politics, you stay clear of. What do you think about uh, your role in the in the Once Upon a Mattress? This is a good show, and it's fun to do. That's the best part of it. Uh -huh. See, in other words, I've reached that stage. If if it's work for me, I don't want to do it. Uh huh. But you give me a show that's fun to do. That's that's different, then I'll do it. I wonder if you have any plans at all to return to television for any spectaculars in which... Uh, well, I don't mind the spectaculars. I do a couple of those every year. Mm -hmm. But I, I wouldn't do a weekly show. Mm -hmm. uh, for a comedian like myself to do a weekly show is the fastest way into Forest Lawn that I know. <laughs> so none of that, huh? <laughs> no, sir. It puts your... Drive you either nuts or... Or push you in your grave because that trying to dig up material for that weekly show, if, if you don't give a darn, like Milton Burl didn't care how many times you repeated something or who, whose material he used. Mm -hmm. He didn't care. He broadcast that. <laughs> so he didn't care. Mm -hmm. That's a different proposition, but I just couldn't work that way. And you cannot dig up that material every week. In this world of 1960, who makes you laugh today? Skelton's my pet. Oh, yeah. I like Skelton. I used to like Lucas Costello, too, very much. Mm -hmm. Hated to lose him. Mm. I've heard that Abbott I get going last out of Jerry Lewis. Yeah. Sure. I love what's his name in his airplane ride, too. His <laughs> airplane ride? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Shelley Berman. People say that comedy has changed through years. I don't think it really has. I oh, think no. people still uh -huh. laugh at, at no. much, much of the... the uh, well, I'll show you two instance why. You go back, say, uh, 40 years, and uh, the world market of American pictures, the comedians, Chaplin, Lloyd, and myself, 
were the three top grossing stars mm -hmm. throughout the rest of the world. Here in the United States, maybe a Valentino came along and outgrosses here, and a Gloria Swanson for a couple of years or something like that, but back we'd come again. Mm -hmm. But they never passed us in any European. The same things that the American audience laughed at here, they laughed at in China, India, Russia, South Africa, South America, every corner of the globe. And I could go any place in Europe today and do a routine and get the same laughs that I got before, the same ones that I get here. So there is no cycle to that. Mm -hmm. It's just as that you've lost your school for action type of comedians. Marcel Marceau, yeah. Bip, the, the pantomimist. It seems like now... this. Well, he tries to combine the, uh, old French pantomime mm -hmm. with uh, ballet and uh, from an artistic standpoint. 